If you're not doing some of this today, you are going to be dead in the water. What's up fam, it's your boy Demir here, purveyor of all sounds underground. Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel today where I'll be discussing different industry business models as it pertains to the underground electronic music industry. But before we jump into things, what I need from you is that SLC. Hit subscribe, like, comment, and more importantly, hit the notifications bell to stay in touch with the new videos that we have up and coming. All right, I don't wanna to waste too much time. These are just very high level observations of things I've seen happening in our industry. Some of you may be aware of the stuff, others won't be, and I'm hoping between the two you learn something. So let's get started. Point number one is the traditional model. What do I mean by this? The traditional business model here for underground electronic music is create great music, sign it to a label that you like, and then make money through various gigs. That was the traditional model when I returned to music around 2010-ish, 2008, 2010-ish. And that was kind of the way to go about things. And then the focus started turning to, well, you need to get on these key la labels to be recognized. And then, you know, promoters and whoever will book you eventually, which we all know is you know, subjective stuff. But that's the traditional model in a nutshell. You sign great music to a label that has the right distribution, etc., and that then in turn turns into gig opportunities where you're essentially monetizing your music as a result. All right, so point number two is streaming, and I'm calling out streaming because it's merely an extension of the first model, which is the traditional model. So when I, again, I talk about traditional in the sense of you sign to a good label, they put out your music on different download sites or DSPs and go from there. But with the introduction of streaming, they're much more than a DSP, it's become a source of revenue for a number of different labels involved. So much so that they see the revenue as a priority over downloads because they're saying the data, you know, shows that it's taken over downloads, which is somewhat true. Downloads, you know, in terms of what people pay to consume music has gone down. And it's not surprising if you think about it, you know, if you're some young kid, you know, you probably have never held a piece of vinyl in your hand. You might not even know what an MP3 is or CD is for that matter. It's all streaming. That's how you discover music in different playlists. So basically streaming is now sort of at the forefront of the revenue model. So, you know, they just join it with the traditional model and say, we're going to send it to both download sites and streaming sites as well. So that's the other observation there. And point number three, so keeping the first two points in mind, one of the new things, somewhat new things that are happening is what I call artist fronted labels. And what I mean by this is cool investor comes around and says, here's, you know, 200K to cool popular artist someone and says you know what we will help run and manage the cost of the operations of your label which includes download sites and streaming we'll send out the ridiculous and atrocious artist statements to people you signed to the label and we will handle all of that along with the contracts and stuff and you know we just want a piece of the equity so you'll see the artist saying yeah it's my label but the reality is is someone with some money and sometimes it's a major label other times it's a private investment group other times it's just really cool and interested people who have some money to spend and say yeah I love what you're doing let's get into this here's some money let me help you run this label but you're going to be the face of the label and you're going to be responsible for attracting people to the label and together as a team we'll decide what artists we sign and that's part of the seed in my opinion that gets planted about it no longer becoming about the music it starts becoming more about how many people does that person have on their profile do they look cool you know do they have an established ghost producer in their arsenal oh no can we get them a ghost producer are they willing to do bullshit stuff like that this is where this crap starts to come in i'm not saying it happens to all artist fronted labels but it's part of the reason why we see the dilemmas that we see today on the subject matter all right and point number four it's the one i love and like 
And quite frankly, if you're not doing some of this today, you are going to be dead in the water like two to five years from now. There always needs to be some form of independence, you know, so point number four is going the independent route. But it's not like what it used to mean, you know, back in the day, you, you know, you mix the records and you got it mastered, you put it on DAT tape and then you went to the vinyl plant and said, yeah, put that on vinyl. And then you took the risk of paying for how many presses to see what distributors would take it on and through their orders, hopefully make, you know, back whatever you spent and more. It's very different now. The way I see independent, the independent business model is just the fact that you as an artist gets to use different and existing systems that are already out there that will help you take advantage of realizing most, if not all of the revenue attached to your music being consumed. Sites like Bandcamp offer really good systems. Beats Union offers really good systems. In addition to that, they offer contractual opportunities where artists can not only meet, but they can collab and say, okay, we're gonna enter this agreement. And then Beats Union recognizes the agreement and distributes the funds accordingly. So there's those types of models. And you know, I talk about Patreon and Noodle as well. It's definitely helped me realize most of, <laughs> or maximize most of the revenue from my actual music but to be transparent here what i'm doing is a hybrid so i'm doing the independent piece plus five percent of any music that i make will go to labels that i actually trust and respect that are more traditional with a streaming component that they don't necessarily care or give a shit about like some other waste people out there right so that's the the model i'm on but you could see from my earlier point you really need to have some sort of independent setup leveraging the existing systems that are out there because it's not going away. You know, there's just so much music that's out there and unique music that you can offer where you need it to be heard. And the best way to go about that is to erect some form of independence, you know? So any labels that have passed up, you know, in the traditional model or the hybrid of the two, traditional and streaming or artist fronted, cool artist fronted label, if they passed on those tracks, put it out yourself, you know what I mean? And take advantage of the monetization opportunities that are there however big or small they may be you absolutely need it but that's really what's going on today and i would say the the stuff in between you know what i'll actually go back to the traditional model too it's no longer about download sales it's all about streaming and playlist builds and you know putting right faces in front of stuff to sell product you know some of the product is good decent but a lot of it is just manufactured bullshit <laughs> you know when you're you're seeing these people that you know they don't make their own music you know they're not really invested in the culture of the art form itself it's just very easy to spot but those are some of the things that are going on whereas with the independent side you really are in full control of your brand story and how you want that to be put out there and doing things like i'm not giving my music to spotify but I'll give it to Amazon and Apple Music like we do with Purveyor because they pay a little bit more, but they respect the, in my opinion, they're respecting artists a bit more, much more so than Spotify ever will. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it off there. Let me know your thoughts on this video in terms of the different industry business models that are hanging out there. And if you have any thoughts of any additional ones I might have missed or need to consider, or people need to consider, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one because as artists, we really need to be thinking about these things much more proactively in everything in which we do. Let me know your thoughts. I usually respond to the comments within 48 hours of posting these videos, so I'd love to hear from you. The comments and conversation doesn't have to stop here. You can join me on my Discord server for free. Check in the comments uh, or the description of the video below, rather. And there's my Noodle setup as well, where I'm posting exclusive content there as well, in addition to my weekly production stream. And I do have another course that's coming. Stay tuned for that if it's not announced by the time this video is published. Much love and respect to you. Peace.